I'm Sarah from St. Thomas Economic Development, here with another little update from the St. Thomas Megasite. This isn't like digging in your backyard sandbox, digging holes and building sandcastles all willy-nilly. A lot of consideration goes into creating a safe project and that's where the geotechnical work for an industrial construction site comes in to ensure the safety and efficiency of the project. But what does that entail? Before any construction begins, geotechnical engineers study the site. They examine the soil, rocks, and groundwater to understand their properties using boreholes. The image on screen illustrates where some of those boreholes are. Currently, there are a total of 150 across the property, taken to a depth of two meters to 15 meters. Typical layers on this site are 300 millimeters of topsoil and below that a meter of mixed silt and below that clay with firm gray clay till down to a bedrock level, which can be 30 meters. At one time, these materials were all glacial deposits. The ridge that cuts through the site known as the St. Thomas Moraine shown in white and the activity currently on site is to move that high point of the ridge to lower elevations illustrated in gray, the lowest elevations being the darkest points on the map. This testing assists in designing foundations and structures that can support the planned industrial facilities. Engineers collect soil samples from the boreholes from different depths to determine its physical and chemical composition and physical strength. They test how easily the soil can be compressed, how much weight it can bear, and if it's prone to settling or shifting. This information is crucial for designing stable foundations. Today, we're fortunate to be able to be on site to check out a plate load test. This test determines the ground's bearing capacity and actual strength by applying an increasing load from a circular steel plate to induce settlement. A measuring device that looks like an upside down plate is mounted below an excavator. Increasing pressure is applied to the plate to determine what the allowable and ultimate bearing capacity of the soil is by continuing to apply that pressure until failure. Another common test that's taken on site daily is a compaction test, technically known as a nuclear density test. Radiation is transmitted directly to the detectors on the bottom of the gauge, allowing for the actual percent compaction to be calculated. Based on the soil testing results, geotechnical engineers design appropriate foundations. For example, if the soil is soft or prone to settling, they may recommend deep piles or specialized foundation designs to ensure the stability of buildings and equipment. Understanding the groundwater level and flow is also vital. Engineers assess how water might affect the construction site and design drainage systems such as sump pumps or drainage ditches to manage excess water. In areas prone to earthquakes, geotechnical engineers evaluate the seismic risks. They design structures and foundations to withstand potential ground shaking. Geotechnical work also considers the environmental impact. Engineers may need to address contamination, protect sensitive ecosystems, or adhere to regulations related to soil disposal. Geotechnical engineers might recommend suitable construction materials like gravel or sand based on the site's geology. This ensures that the materials used are compatible with the ground conditions. There is a team of geotechs on site monitoring the site daily to ensure safety and efficiency throughout the construction process. This work helps to prevent accidents, delays, and costly repairs, making it a crucial part of any industrial construction project. There actually are studio neighbors at the Beehive as well. That's all for today. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you join us again next week.